Hello and welcome back to part 2 of how to make a button in Unreal Engine 5. Not just with buttons, and sorry, not just with cubes that spin, but I'm just using the cubes that spin as an example. The way this works is that matching string in its in in its tag zero line. And this sort of forms like a, a circuit system that you may have seen in other tutorials. So this one, for example, has a tag that says counter spinning cube, and this one has a tag on it that says counter spinning cube. So this button will activate this cube and start it spinning. This button is the same, x spin cube, x spin cube, and it's the same on here, spinning cube, spinning cube. So you can also do things like you can create multiples. You can create multiple cubes, multiple lights, doors, anything you like. It's actually very, very flexible the way with the way of the way I do this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the interface function that does two things. One that opera one that acts as a acts as like a trigger for these objects that they can implement. And the other one is a function that gets called on the first person bl character blueprint that allows you to get all of these char all of these objects in the first place and they're going to be stored in an array on each button so we'll do that we'll uh, start off with that interface first so the first function we're going to add is get objects. Let's call it get object targets. We're going to go with, yeah, a name works. But we want it to return an array of actor references. References. Okay, simple enough. We can actually no, we can't close that because we still need to add the other one. So the other one is we need to add another simple function called trigger. You can call it anything you want, but trigger fits this perfectly. Compile and save. Close that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first person character blueprint and already on the side we've got these here. Now we want to get go to get trigger objects in the graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the uh, we're going to get the list. Uh, get the target list of uh, of actors with a certain with a certain that are that are imp implementing the interface STD. So we're going to do. We also need somewhere to put them. So what we're going to do is we're going to carry a temp actor, which is the array. So yeah, set it to an array, an actor. We've done it before, which is why it shows up, but. Then what we're going to do is we're going to clear it. So it's starting out blank. And then what we're going to do, the final result will be... It's going to stick that in there. So what we now we want to do is we want to get all actors with interface. I'm going to select the interface that we're using for the has the trigger thing in it. And this will return an array. 
Now, this tag name here, we need to uh, now compare each one of these and test to see if each one actually has the desired target name. So I'm going to do four each loop. Plug that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do get tags. And then we're going to get the first tag of each one. Now, if that tag, if the tag we're looking for is implemented in the, in that particular, in this particular actor, so for example, the button, so, so for example, this button is for the counter spinning cube, it'll cycle through and go, okay, yeah, oh, this is the counter, this is the counter, this one also has a counter spinning cube in its tag, in its, in its tag, so yeah, we're going to take that reference and pass it on. And that's what happens. So what we do is get. We're going to add that to the array. So that object that it finds, it gets added to this array of actors. And we'll stick a branch in there. That's true. So just clean up some of this, make it a bit more. And that's that part. And then when it's done, we want to send the entire array back to the object that's uh, requesting it. So we need to set that part up. What we're going to do, we're going to go to the, get rid of that. So now we're going to go to the button. And coming off the begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to get, get player character, which is that one. Now, if we execute that function, the uh, get, what do we call it in the get target list, get target, get object targets, there it is, Also get tags because we need the tag our own tag with the, its own the button tag. So we need zero. There we go. Right. So what this does is it calls the get object targets function from the from the interface on the first person character, which is this one. And then this one spits back all of the relevant objects to this button based on this tag. Now, what we then need to do So we need to store it in the button. So we just promote that to variable, and there we go. Target references. And if we really want to, we can test it by printing out. T 
test it by printing out the ones that we should have. All of them. Hang on. So this should execute three times. So for each button it displays everything. So spinning cube, X spinning cube, it's gone now. But you get the idea. So what we're going to do is we need to set up the trigger system, which comes off this. So what we're going to do is go th get the target references. I'm going to do a for each in them. And then we're going to execute that trigger. That's it. So you hit the button, it executes the trigger. When you start, when the button gets spawned, it gets a list of the objects that it needs for that collection of target references. And that is pretty much that for the button. Now, inside spinning cubes, I've already added something in there to, um, I've already implemented the event, the trigger event, the interfaces, and all it really does is just set the tri set the tick enabled, turns it on and off. So we should be able to just go, let's avoid the gun. Of course, if you click anywhere else, it's not implemented. And that is a fairly simple way of making a button that you can use in the world that activates something and something else. You, there's plenty of ways you can do this. You can You can do quite a bit. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe. And there'll be another one at some point using the other button. The latching button that I showed off in the last video. And I might even do a door, depending. So.